Hey guys, my name is Mike Kelly and I have been a commercial and architectural photographer for about 10 years now. Now, over the years I've gotten pretty good at controlling the light, whether using artificial or just getting in the right spot at the right time and finding perfect natural light. But the one thing I've never been able to control is the weather. When your client has an expectation and the weather's not cooperating, you, as a professional, still have to figure out a solution. Now, sky replacements don't have to be difficult or time consuming to get great results, but each situation is going to be unique and there's really no automated way to do this perfectly every single time over a range of different images. So in this tutorial, we'll be working with really simple sky prisms that are pretty much just throwing a gradient over our sky. And then we're gonna be working our way up to the really complicated thing where there's leaves and buildings and transparencies and motion blur and reflections and all that kind of stuff. In addition to the lessons, we're going to give you 200 digital negative files of skies that we've put together just for this tutorial. These skies are from all over the world and in every lighting condition you can imagine. Everything from twilight, golden hour, stormy skies, and clear skies, they are all included in this library. We've arranged them into a Lightroom catalog so you can follow along exactly what I'm doing as I'm teaching you in Photoshop. But if you're not a Lightroom user, don't worry. We've made it easy for you to follow along no matter what software you'll be using. So even if I'm working on a drab day, I can go into that library and I can turn that drab or bleak day into something completely different and far more interesting. My commercial clients have loved this ability to be flexible with the weather, and it allows me to make them a lot happier at the end of the day. So for less than a couple dollars per sky, you're getting raw images. These are the cream of the crop. Mike has taken thousands of pictures of skies over his career. We culled through all of them to pick only the absolute best. Plus you get the tutorial with Mike, where you get all of the techniques that he uses to actually replace the skies. Now with your purchase, you're going to receive multiple downloads and with each of them is a folder containing different skies. What we have is a daytime folder, a golden hour folder, and a twilight folder. And within each of those folders, there's a clear, a full, and a scattered. Now clear, full, and scattered refer to the cloud coverage in each folder. Now obviously Mike is an architectural photographer. They of course need these skies, but I have been replacing skies in almost every genre of photography. I have replaced skies on wedding photos, portraits. Also, a few years ago, I did this car shoot. I had to completely change the sky in that as well. No matter what type of photographer you are, if you shoot landscapes, if you shoot real estate, if you shoot commercial work, every photographer needs to know how to seamlessly replace the sky so that it looks as natural as possible. Now, I know Photoshop can be a little bit overwhelming, so I'm gonna walk you through all the way from the very, very basics to the most complicated sky replacements using all the tools at our disposal. In this short amount of time, I was able to take this relatively flat, lifeless image and make it into a much more dynamic, much more balanced and interesting shot by the addition of that sky. Now this was a relatively complicated sky replacement with the reflections and that kind of weird horizon blend that we had to do. But like I said, it was a pretty quick and easy fix and hopefully you can uh, take these tips and use them on your own sky replacements as well. I know like many of you, I've been guilty of just throwing a sky on an image and then quickly brushing out some of the bottom parts of it to get it to blend in. But then when you zoom in at 100%, you see all the little errors and it just looks like a rushed job. It does not look like a final polished image. Having filmed and worked with Mike over a bunch of the other tutorials we produced with him, I have to say I've learned so many incredible Photoshop techniques just watching his retouching. So far we focused on using one main method for each of our skies to get the desired end result. In this next shot, I wanna focus on what happens if the layer mask technique doesn't work or the blend if technique doesn't work or the channel mask technique doesn't work. Well, sometimes you have to combine different methods to get the right result. And honestly, a lot of the skies that I do uh, my own replacements on, they require some amount of improvisation. And I think that's a very important skill to learn when you're replacing skies. I see photographers doing sky replacements all the time and I see the same mistakes repeated over and over and over. The lighting doesn't match, the color doesn't match, the blending isn't very good. And what you get is a photo that doesn't look very realistic. You can instantly tell that they've attempted to alter this image in Photoshop. I'm gonna show you how to fix these problems quickly and simply so that your sky replacements are perfect every single time. I like that there's so many clouds in here, but what I do need to do is brush out again to sell this effect entirely, kind of brush out some of those um, mountains in the background. So I'm gonna click on that layer, add a mask, take my brush, big soft brush, and just sort of seamlessly blend it away. And that's looking pretty good. In this tutorial are six instructional lessons. Everything from a super simple, easy sky replacement all the way up to some of the most complicated situations that you'll face. 
In addition, I'm going to walk you through three of my own portfolio images and show you the actual techniques that I use for images on my website. I've already done a lot of work on this image as it is. This is kind of my more, um, my light painting style. And I can turn that on and off and you can see where we've got the image to thus far. Now, I have entire tutorials on that technique, which is a whole other thing in itself. But for right now, I just wanna show you yet another replacement technique for skies. Now, this one is a bit tricky. My end goal here is to not make a sky that's going to change or overpower the image in any way. This one is more about subtlety. I've seen a ton of sky replacement packs on the internet that just have a JPEG or something, and you're gonna lose a lot of latitude for editing those files. Because we're giving you these RAW or DNG files, you'll be able to take these skies and match the colors and exposure to almost any photo that you have created in the past or future. This will help you create a seamless sky replacement no matter the conditions. Almost every single picture in this pack comes with the horizon in the shot. This makes lining it up and keeping things realistic so much easier. If you just buy a sky or grab one off the internet, in many cases, they're just aiming up the sky. They're getting pretty clouds, but you're never going to get the correct perspective. So I'm gonna drag that ruler in so I remember where my horizon is, right? I'm gonna turn the sky layer back on. I'm gonna hit V for my move tool, and I'm gonna drag that sky so that my horizon doesn't have to be exact, but pretty closely matches that of the original image. And once that's in place, we can start getting to work. And I'm just gonna start painting black over that layer. And what's happening is I'm revealing the landscape below the sky. This is looking instantly way better than this dull, flat, totally boring landscape from before. There's drama, the sky sort of adds this nice graphic line through the frame. I think it looks much, much better. So this is like the simplest version of a sky replacement. You might notice my masking isn't that great. Don't worry, we're gonna get far more detailed. We're gonna do some very perfect, very refined masking to really make some amazing pictures further in this tutorial. The key to a good sky replacement is that the viewer should not be able to tell that you actually did this. It needs to look real. And so I think if you look at Mike's work, none of his skies are over the top. You would never jump to the conclusion that this is a fake sky or it's been replaced. And I think that says a lot about Mike's work, but it also says a lot about the variety of images that he has to work with. He's taken so many different pictures of skies. He has the perfect sky for every individual job. Now, if you're a photographer, you understand that Mike took these photographs, he's the copyright holder, but if you purchase this pack, you will get a license to use this pack in perpetuity for any purpose you want. So no matter if you're shooting for yourself or some big high-end client or magazine, everything's going to be perfectly legal. I cannot tell you the amount of times I have had to shoot something and the client has come back to me, especially in advertising photography, and they've said, can we make the sky a little bit more dramatic? Or can we make this cloudy sky sunny? Or can we change the color of the sky to fit the ad? It happens almost with freakish regularity in the commercial photography world. And not only that, but also in the fine art world, you can add so much to an image by changing the sky. You can add drama, you can add texture. It will really add a lot of depth and atmosphere to your photos if you're able to control every aspect of a picture. And of course, the sky is a major aspect in almost all types of photography. Having a nicely organized library like this has saved me hundreds of hours over my career. I don't have to go around hunting and trying to find the perfect sky. It's all laid out right in front of me. You could go online, you could search a stock website, you could try to find 10 perfect skies, or you could buy this, it's a digital download. You will instantly be able to download it, you'll be able to watch the tutorials, and you'll have all of these raw files that you can put into any of your photographs. A sky replacement does not need to be complicated or intimidating. Anybody with just a little bit of Photoshop knowledge can do it. I'm super excited to share both this library of skies and all these Photoshop techniques. I can't wait to see what you guys come up with.